For the first time, India has landed a spacecraft near the lunar south pole. Chandrayaan-3 is testing a potential site for future lunar outposts there. This country joins a group of four that may soon establish human presences on the moon. What has Chandrayaan-3 discovered there, and how will it affect future lunar missions? Chandrayaan-3 and the South Pole of the Moon India's Chandrayaan-3 mission launched on July 15, 2023. The two rovers, Vikram and Pragyan, are headed to Earth satellite's lunar South Pole. Did you know that this spot, of all places, can be vital to future settlers? Large water deposits can offer fresh water, oxygen, and fuel to humans. For ages, water has existed as ice in craters where little light enters. Chindrion 3's mission is to examine the lunar environment and resources surrounding the South Pole, as well as the temperature profile and chemical composition of the lunar rocks. The South Pole region can be useful, but it can also be difficult, with temperatures ranging from minus 150 degrees Celsius to plus 120 degrees C, depending on depth and time of day. The temperature will be measured by the stationary lander VCORM, while the tiny rover Pragyan will go on exploring missions. Success after a major setback. The third lunar expedition from India Chindrion 3 is the first to land near the South Pole. In Sanskrit, India's ancient language, Chindrion, means lunar vehicle. The mission is part of India's ambitious space program, which began with the first rocket launch in 1962. The rocket was launched from a modest and rural fishing town at the time. India already has infrastructure that can compete with NASA's huge launch pads. Nobody paid much attention to India as a space nation in the 1960s. The world watched with bated breath as the United States and the Soviet Union competed in space. India humbly continued its space program. Since then, the country has launched numerous satellites, rockets, and probes into space, gradually establishing itself as one of the world's major spacefaring nations. When India's first lunar mission, Chandrayaan-1, launched in 2008, the stakes were already high. The Indian Lunar Orbiter drew attention from around the world. The Moon Impact Probe in particular sparked curiosity because it slammed directly into the Moon. Scientists were able to collect data and evidence of trace water molecules as a result of the impact. Chandrayaan-2, which launched in 2019, included a lander named Vicom, and a rover named Pragyan that had already visited the Moon. The orbiter that transported them is still in orbit around the Moon. However, the mission did not end well for the lander and rover, who were involved in an accident while descending to the lunar surface. The surprise was intense, but India's goal was even greater. India's aim of landing at the South Pole was not abandoned, and soon after, another lander named Vikram and a rover named Pragyan started out on their trip as part of Kundrian 3. Both machines were nearly identical to the preceding two, with only a few small differences. Chandrayaan 3, a copy of the Kundrian 2 lander and rover, was launched on July 15, 2023 from India's Satish Dhawan Space Center and successfully entered lunar orbit around a month later, on August 20, 2023. The lander rover team started the perilous final descent to the South Pole region. Some Indians may have been sweating throughout the landing, but this time there was immense joy. Vikram and Pragyan had successfully landed. Because of its location, the South Pole region is difficult and perilous for such landings. Signals from Earth can only be relayed with a three-second transmission delay. This is too much for Earth-controlled probes to land safely. Chandrayaan-3 was completely self-sufficient, depending solely on its own onboard processors and sensors. The landing spot was a danger because it was in an unexplored area with no detailed map. India shown bravery by permitting the $2 million instruments to land there, but the Indian spacewalkers were certain of their cause. 
Despite Chindrian 2's failure, Chindrian 3 is outfitted with a highly clever navigation system, a camera, and a radar to scan the terrain on approach. Every rock and crater was identified, and their flight path was modified to accommodate each barrier. This completely automated landing navigation system is a technical marvel that has won international recognition. The lack of sunlight on the moon's south polar area is the mission's next hurdle. For this aim, Kondrian-3 and its rovers are outfitted with their own batteries and solar cells. Vikram sent its first image of the moon's far side shortly after landing on August 20th, 2023 and set down its tiny rover. Vikram was named after Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, the creator of the Indian space program, as well as an astronomer, nuclear physicist, and visionary extraordinaire. Pragyan is the Sanskrit word for wisdom. They will spend at least six months studying the South Pole together. Vikram's mission objectives are as follows. The main goals of Kundrian-3 are to improve India's soft landing capability for space probes and to perform scientific experiments to investigate the South Pole. Kundrian-3 has 14 pieces of technological equipment, cameras, and other devices designed to measure various characteristics and effects of the lunar surface and underworld. Chastity, which stands for Chandra's Surface Thermophysical Experiment, is one of the most essential sensors aboard the lander. Chastity is a gadget that uses a rod-shaped probe to drill up to 10 centimeters into lunar dust before measuring temperatures and mineral components. Chastity is a first. No analogous instrument has ever been deployed on the Moon or Mars. The findings of the Kundrian-3 project will assist scientists globally, not only in India. At depth, Temperatures are forecast to range from 10 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius. Chastity's data will help estimate how deep water is buried beneath the dust and how much effort settlers would have to make to access those water supplies. The Lunar Retro Reflector Array, L, is another significant equipment aboard Vikram. This device is equipped with eight mirrors that can reflect laser beams. It can be used to calculate distances between things on the moon, but L can do more. The device can precisely measure the distance between the lunar pole and Earth. Vikram's measurements are intended to produce the most precise data to date. In addition, the findings are expected to confirm Einstein's theory of general relativity. Some of the theory's predictions address how enormous objects bend space and time around them. Because of its weight, the Earth twists space more than the Moon. Nonetheless, the Moon's mass must have an effect on the Earth's gravitational pull. The precise measurements allow us to put some of these predictions to the test. Pragyan's mission objectives, the Land Rover. Pragyan will examine the chemical composition of lunar rocks and soil using the Alpha Particle X-ray Spectrometer, APXS. To accomplish this, the rover will move over the lunar surface at a speed of one centimeter per second, looking for the finest places to explore. Minerals and elements in the environment can be measured using a concentrated beam of alpha particles and X-rays. Pragyan can even build maps of mineral and rock distribution and formation. The LIBS instrument is a laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy device that uses a strong laser beam to melt a small sample of lunar material. The substance is heated to emit light, and the light beams inform the spectrometer about the precise proportions of elements and minerals, as well as the isotopic ratios of specific elements. First look at Chandrayaan-3. The first interesting results have already been revealed by India's space agency. Images and videos published on Twitter show Chindrian-3 landing, the rover rolling out of Vikram's belly, the first test drives, and the Indian Space Agency releasing preliminary measurement results. In late August and early September, Vikram and Pragyan were successfully deployed for a few days before the lunar night fell. 
The lander and rover are only capable of operating for one lunar day at a time. The light then bids farewell as night falls for 14 days. The moon day, which lasts 14 days, begins after the long lunar night. Imagine being moon settlers and having to deal with the fact that the day lasts 14 Earth days and the night the same. What are your thoughts about that? Tell us in the comments. The lander and rover don't have a broken biological clock, but they do have to adjust to the moon and go into standby mode during the lunar night. When it is safe to do so, the two resume a drilling into the ground, measuring temperatures and seismic activity, examining samples, and investigating new areas. The lander and rover are constantly communicating with a Kindrion 2 orbiter, which delivers data to the Indian Space Agency's Mission Control Center in Bengaluru. The orbiter will remain in orbit around the moon for at least another seven years, but the future of Kindrion 3 is uncertain. Large temperature changes and lunar dust on the lunar surface have a strong influence on the lander and rover. Both probes include highly sensitive technical measurement units and an inbuilt cleaning system. Solar panels and camera lenses, in particular, must be cleaned on a regular basis to remove fine lunar dust. It's unclear how long the expedition will last. Every day that Chandrayaan-3 is operational marks a watershed moment in India's space program. Chandrayaan-3 has already been a huge hit in India. The expedition will not just boost national science. Vikram and Pragyan's new perspectives on the moon will inspire all of us. Chandrayaan-3 will provide light on new possibilities and opportunities for future lunar missions. It is hoped that all nations currently present on the moon would discover peaceful collaboration and maybe resource sharing in the future. India has close ties with NASA and ESA and has expressed interest in collaborative projects. Will this make the moon the hub of Earth peace in the future? We'll see what happens. China and Russia are two more countries with a foothold on the moon. The Chinese are actively researching the moon's far side, which is mainly unknown. The Russian lunar program currently has an orbiter in lunar orbit, and the Russians hope to build their own space station on the moon by 2040. India's plans for a space station are currently in limbo. Kundrian 4 is set to launch in 2025 and will return lunar samples from the South Pole region to Earth for further examination. Subscribe today if you want to see more entertaining videos.